Hello my dear students and welcome back to Excellence Batch and I am your Diksha ma'am. So here we have started the chapter human reproduction and in the previous class we have discussed about vulva, mammary glands and the lactation. The lactation will be covered later on also fine. So today we are going to talk about how the gametes are formed in the female. In the previous classes, we have done such kind of a pattern. We first discuss male reproductive system, then we discuss this spermatogenesis, then we discuss female reproductive system. So now we will be discussing about oogenesis. And oogenesis is the formation of female gamete, right? Just like in humans, one is male, another is a female. So male gamete was sperm and its formation was spermatogenesis. Just like that, the formation of a female gamete is oogenesis. But both are slightly little different from, you know, each other. Most of the things are same, but there are also certain differences. So we'll be talking these things about, all about these things in detail. Apart from that, we'll be also covering the structure of ovary again because I want to show very special structures present in the ovary and yes, the hormonal control of oogenesis. So let's get started. This topic is really very important. Why? <clears throat> because every year the questions are asked from this topic and for, you know, for students also, this topic is a kind of a confusing but Trust me, if you will pay attention in, to, me, to my lecture today, you will not get any kind of confusion, right? Alright, so let's get started. Oogenesis, what is oogenesis? So it is the formation, formation of female gamete. And the name of the female gamete is ova, singular is ovum, also known as ooted. And sometime you also call it as egg, right? So this oogenesis, when does it start? It starts, it starts before birth. It starts before birth or we can say during embryonic development. During embryonic development. So that's the first difference. That's the first difference between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Spermatogenesis or formation of male gamete in the males, it starts during puberty. But the female gamete formation starts right before birth. For example, I am a female. So my gametogenesis or oogenesis, it started when I was in my mother's womb. So when I was fetus, at that time my oogenesis got started. So unlike that of spermatogenesis which starts during puberty, it starts before birth during embryonic stages, right? Second thing, then ma'am, if it has started before that, then why do female get puberty during or near to the age of males? The reason is hormones. Hormones are, should be there. Hormones should be there to trigger the process. Don't worry, you will get to know everything in detail. Fine? Just like in male, we have spermatogonia as male germ cells. Just like that, we also have female germ cells known as oogonia. Known as oogonia. Fine? So, let's first understand the process of oogenesis and we'll talk about the other things later. So, what happened in oogenesis? Like in male, we have spermatogonia. In female, we have oogonia or female germ cells. Female germ cells. So, these oogonia or female germ cells, they are diploid. They have 46 chromosome or we can also write it like 46 or 23 pairs, right? Or we can also write it as 44 plus XX because they are females. They have only one kind of sex chromosome that is X. In males, we have two types of sex chromosome X and Y. Fine. Now this oogonia, it will undergo maturation or differentiation and it will form a cell known as primary oocyte. Known as 
primary oocyte which is also diploid. Now this primary oocyte just like in males, just like in males we have spermatogonia and then we have primary spermatocyte just like that everything is happening like that right. This primary oocyte has started its meiosis 1 before birth right. This so everything is happening before birth. It has started its meiosis 1 but it is unable to complete it. So it stops here. The development stops here. It is unable to complete its meiosis 1 though it has started it. So everything this is happening before birth. So before birth the female's oogonia has differentiated into primary oocyte. They have started the meiosis 1 before birth but they got stuck here. They got stuck here and where does they got stuck? They got stuck at the prophase 1 of meiosis 1 and you call it as halt. Halt means they got stuck. So meiosis 1 has been started before birth. Meiosis 1 has been started before birth but it got stuck at prophase 1. Fine. Now what will happen? What will happen now? The female puberty has been reached. The female's puberty has been reached. So here is puberty. So during puberty she will be having rush of hormones. She will be having rush of hormones. Fine. And one more thing important thing to note here is that now this primary oocyte like in males primary spermatocyte is always alone. But in female this primary oocyte is never alone. This primary oocyte is present. This primary oocyte is present inside or we can say it is surrounded by a number of cells and it forms a follicle. It forms a follicle. So when a female is born, she has a number of primary oocyte. Primary oocytes are considered as queen cells, right? So they are surrounded by a lot of nurse cells. And these cells have a name known as granulosa cells. Known as granulosa cell. And the structure that is formed, you call it as primary follicle. What do you call it as primary follicle? So this primary oocyte is present inside primary follicle and follicle is nothing but a structure which contains primary oocyte surrounded by a number of follicle. So if you will see the ovary of a female you can find number of primary follicles they are immature they have primary oocyte in them which has started its meiosis 1. So when a female is born she has around 2 to 20 lakh of these primary follicles. She has around 2 to 20 lakh of these primary follicles. Fine. So when a female is born she is having a lot of primary oocyte which are surrounded by cells and hence that structure is follicle. Fine. But now it has to complete its meiosis 1. When will it start its meiosis 1? It will start its meiosis 1 when she will hit the puberty. When she will hit the puberty. So what happened when she hit the puberty? When she hit the puberty, hormones rises. What rises? Hormones rises. So for example, a hormone rises and the name of the hormone is FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. FSH came and it will lead to the development of this primary follicle. It will lead to the development of this primary follicle and convert it into secondary follicle and make it a secondary follicle. Right. So for example she hit puberty. At that time she will have a you know this level of FSH in her blood and that FSH level will start poking the primary follicle to get mature and convert into another follicle known as secondary follicle. Known as secondary follicle. This secondary follicle has more number of granulosa cell. This secondary follicle has more number of granulosa cell and it has primary oocyte in it. It has primary oocyte in it. Right? Apart from that it has developed a layer around it and the name of the layer is theca layer. What is the name of the layer? Theca layer. This is theca and the structure this follicle is now known as secondary follicle and the name of this structure is secondary follicle. Right? So when a female is born, it has a lot of primary follicle. So that means when she is at birth, she has a lot of primary follicle. 
right so when she hit puberty one because she has lacks of uh, uh, follicles at birth but when she hit puberty only 60 to 80 thousands of follicles are left right for example when i was born i had 2 to 20 lakhs of follicle but at the time i reached puberty i have 60 to 80 thousand of follicles left in my one ovary i have two ovaries so in each ovary 60 to 80 thousands of follicles were left right now when i hit the puberty my hormone levels rises right at that time one follicle one primary follicle not all any one of those follicle will be selected and it will get converted into secondary follicle that means one lucky one is selected it is on the verge of becoming ova so this is the development has already started this is what we are saying development has already started the when she hit the puberty she had around how many follicles 62 Okay, I am writing it somewhere else because then it will not be clear to you. She has left 60 to 80 thousand of follicle out of which one will be selected and then that will be converted into secondary follicle. So at puberty when meiosis 1 is happening at that time primary and secondary follicles have been developed, right. Now what will happen? Meiosis 1 will be completed and now a cell will be formed. Now a cell will be formed the name of the cell is secondary oocyte but here the meiosis 1 will be unequal in males the meiosis was equal but in females it is unequal as a result it will form two unequal size cells the main cell is secondary oocyte and the name of this cell is polar body this polar body is not supposed to be the main portion our main purpose of meiosis 1 was to reduce the chromosome number to make it n single right so we have given it only the dna portion but we are not giving it cytoplasm because sperm will also not be carrying cytoplasm sperm will also not be carrying the cytoplasm so we want these egg should contain enough cytoplasm to compensate it because sperm will also not be carrying its cytoplasm right now the secondary oocyte where is it present now let's see because two developments are going on here okay this, this cell which we are talking it's present inside the follicle now more fsh will rise and the secondary follicle will turn into tertiary follicle it will turn into tertiary follicle right tertiary follicle is little different it is little different it is little different let's see how first of all it has a number of granulosa cells <coughs> it has a number of granulosa cell it has also produced a cavity in it it has also produced a cavity in it another thing this theca layer this theca layer have been differentiated into two layers outer and inner outer and inner so the theca layer has been differentiated into two theca interna and theca externa right the granulosa number increases the granulosa cell number increases this is your tertiary follicle in tertiary follicle how does tertiary follicle is formed because female is releasing lot of fsh lot of this hormone follicle stimulating hormone so this will stimulate the follicle to grow so here we have a lot of granulosa cells we have this layer known as okay we have this layer known as theca externa we have this layer known as theca interna apart from that we have this cavity here we have this cavity here the name of the cavity is antrum now as soon as the tertiary follicle is formed from secondary follicle the primary oocyte present inside this will get converted into secondary follicle uh, secondary oocyte the primary oocyte present here will get converted into secondary oocyte and secondary oocyte has you know a property that as soon as it is formed it will produce a glycoproteinaceous layer known as zona pellucida it's a glycoproteinaceous layer it is it does not contain any cells cells are absent in zona pellucida 
only glycoproteins are there and it is secreted by secondary oocyte. It is secreted by secondary oocyte. Yeah, right. You got me right. So here I am just trying to explain you one more time. When a female is not born uh, in the womb, she had oogonia. Oogonia has been differentiated and they have been differentiated into primary oocyte. This primary oocyte has started meiosis 1 but it gets stuck at prophase 1. Right? And this primary oocyte is not present alone. They are surrounded by a number of cells known as granulosa cell and the structure formed is a primary follicle. So when a female is born, she has 2 to 20 lakh of these follicles. Fine. Now when the puberty hits, the level of hormone rises, any one of this primary follicle will get selected, any one and it will get converted into secondary follicle. Right? Now secondary follicle will get converted into tertiary follicle. The primary oocyte is present in primary and secondary follicle. Now here it will complete its meiosis 1. So we say meiosis 1 is completed in the tertiary follicle where primary oocyte gets converted into secondary oocyte. Fine. Now in most of the female and most of her life the stage tucks here and it will not reach above. Why? Because meiosis 2 has been started here. Now secondary oocyte as soon as it is formed it will start its meiosis 2. But meiosis 2 again got stuck here. Meiosis 2 again got stuck here at metaphase 2. This meiosis 2 will only be completed when fertilization happens. When fertilization happens. When secondary oocyte, when secondary oocyte will receive the sperm, only then a trigger occurs and secondary oocyte will get converted into ovum and the second polar body. Again the division is unequal. This is the second polar body. This is the first polar body. You got me right, right? So this stage only occurs when a female got pregnant or the fertilization occurred. In most of the female up to secondary oocyte is formed and later on it gets degenerate. Fine. Now what will happen of this? So you can see this is a tertiary follicle. Now FSH level will rise more. FSH level will rise more as a result this tertiary follicle will get converted into graphene follicle or mature follicle. So graphene follicle or mature follicle it has secondary oocyte, it has secondary oocyte right and secondary oocyte it forms a proteinaceous layer around it known as zona pellucida, known as zona pellucida which is surrounded by these cells like this granulosa cells only but they have a name known as corona radiata. What, what is their name? Corona radiata because it looks like a crown. Corona means crown not because of coronavirus. Coronavirus is also coronavirus because it's uh, spike proteins give the appearance of a crown that's why right. So primary follicle has converted into secondary, secondary into tertiary, tertiary into the mature follicle, graphene follicle which I am drawing right. So this graphene follicle it has secondary oocyte, it has a zona pellucida cells of corona radiata and it also have, have the theca externa, theca interna and a lot of granulosa cells, lot of granulosa cells and a very big cavity which was very small in tertiary follicle known as antrum. And here all the granulosa cells, they are present in this talk like structure known as germ hill like this, right, like this. So this is the mature follicle, this is the mature follicle. So here it is, this is your secondary oocyte. This is zona pellucida, 
which is not made up of cells but what it is made up of glycoprotein this is the layer of corona radiata corona radiata right and this cavity is antrum this layer is theca externa this layer is theca interna fine and what is this this is germ hill or cumulus euphorus also known as cumulus euphorus and what is the structure known as this is your graphian follicle or mature follicle or mature follicle okay so let me explain you one more time because that might be a little confusing but we don't need to get confused right so what happened guys what happened when a female is in the womb she has this your mother cell which undergo meiosis uh, which undergo differentiation and from primary oocyte which is also diploid now it has started meiosis 1 but it gets stuck at prophase 1 now before birth all these things have happened when she took the birth <clears throat> when she took birth at that time at the time of birth she had these lot of primary oocyte but these primary oocyte are present in these primary follicles right she has around 22 like 2 to 20 lakhs of them now when she will hit the puberty the level of hormone will rise like fsh and this hormone and this hormone will lead to the development of any one follicle at puberty she don't have the follicles in lakh she have follicle around 60 to 80000 in each ovary fine now meiosis 1 will get only completed during the uh, its uh, puberty during the starting of first cycle like imagine today the female got mature her hormone level will rise so this is how she started developing some follicles now follicle gets developed from primary to secondary the difference in both of them is just it has one extra layer of theca more granulosa cell but the inner cuin cell is still the same the primary oocyte now the level more rises now when the level of fsh rises more the secondary follicle gets converted into tertiary follicle tertiary follicle is a miniature of the mature follicle it it will now after the tertiary follicle is formed there is a line in ncrt after the tertiary follicle is formed the meiosis 1 will be completed so here which we are completing the meiosis 1 where it is completing it is completing in tertiary follicle right so that means secondary oocyte will be present in tertiary follicle and in graphian follicle fine now how it is different it contains or uh, as soon as secondary oocyte is formed it will secrete a zona pellucida layer then it contains a lot of granulosa cell a small cavity starts to form known as antrum and theca interna and theca externa fine now moving further after secondary oocyte is formed in tertiary follicle it will get stuck at meiosis 2 at which phase metaphase now tertiary follicle will continue to grow and form this large graphian follicle fine now after the graphian follicle is formed after the graphian follicle is formed what happen we need to complete meiosis 2 so what happen when the meiosis 2 uh, get at halt so when secondary oocyte is formed it get halt at meiosis 2 and meiosis 2 can only be completed when the fertilization occurs so what happen after that so let me explain you with different view here okay so for example this is ovary this is ovary okay this is ovary of a female so in the ovary there is an egg tube what is present here egg tube this egg tube it contains a number of primary follicle it contains a number of primary follicle fine any one of the primary follicle will be selected for example we have selected this primary follicle having primary oocyte and granulosa cell and granulosa cell so any one of a primary follicle will be selected and it contains what primary oocyte now imagine female hit the puberty she had a rush of hormone known as fsh now fsh will lead to the development of secondary follicle now the primary oocyte that is present here primary 
oocyte which is present here it has started meiosis 1 it is at stuck phase it is at halt of prophase 1 right so we are here we are here okay we are here the primary oocyte that we are looking at in primary follicles it is at prophase 1 okay now as the puberty hits she started developing one of a primary follicle and it's again contains same primary oocyte but number of granulosa cell a little larger in size and has a theca layer and has a theca layer this is secondary follicle again this secondary follicle have what it has primary oocyte this primary oocyte is at halt of prophase 1 now after the secondary follicle gets converted into tertiary follicle again the level of FSH will rise more this once the tertiary follicle is formed the inner cell known as primary oocyte it will get converted into secondary oocyte producing zona pellucida lot of granulosa cells entrum and theca interna and theca externa this structure is tertiary follicle so we say that the meiosis 1 here meiosis 1 gets completed and what is formed secondary oocyte so this is one what is occurring in a female right so now secondary oocyte is formed that means meiosis 1 is completed it has started meiosis 2 it has started meiosis 2 but again it will get stuck at metaphase 2 but this follicle will keep on developing and you will see a large follicle theca externa theca interna contains secondary oocyte it contains secondary oocyte then it will contain zona pellucida corona radiata and the germ hill right this follicle is your graphene follicle which is a mature follicle so after the mature follicle is formed which also contains secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte is stuck at meiosis 2 metaphase 2 now this is ovary now this has to move out from the ovary because if it has to complete its meiosis 2 it has to meet sperm and you all know sperm can only enter inside inside fallopian tube it cannot go inside ovary so this has to move out so this structure moves out during ovulation ovulation means rupture of the graphene follicle a very important step will occur here and this will occur due to the presence of hormone known as LH so here another hormone will come known as luteinizing hormone which will rupture this follicle which will rupture this follicle like this right and and here what will be released here secondary oocyte containing zona pellucida and corona radiata cell this will release this will be released and it will enter fallopian tube it will enter fallopian tube and this process where it is getting rupture you call it as ovulation you call it as ovulation now whatever is left here whatever is left here it will not just remain like that it will not just remain like that it will later on get reduced it will later on get reduced for example this structure will first converted into a red color body which have a blood clot in it which have a blood clot in it known as corpus hemorrhagicum hemorrhage hemorrhage what is used for hemorrhage what is used for rupture of blood vessel because lot of blood vessels get ruptured so here corpus hemorrhagicum will be formed whatever is left from that corpus hemorrhagicum will be formed right after that a yellow color body will be formed a yellow colored body will be formed and the name of this body is known as corpus luteum this is very important this corpus luteum is an endocrine body because it secretes hormone it is an endocrine body because it secretes hormone after that so after some time it will regresses to form a reduced body known as corpus albicans a white color body this is how the journey of one follicle ends in a female cycle 
right so why she was born she had a lot of primary follicles which are primary oocyte stuck in the meiosis one stage now when the puberty hits she will start developing the follicles during her menstrual cycle and they will get converted into secondary follicle but we need to complete the meiosis one meiosis one gets completed gets completed in tertiary follicle after tertiary follicle is formed immediately after the formation of tertiary follicle primary oocyte will complete its meiosis one and unequal division occur it will form secondary oocyte and a very small polar body and polar body will then degenerate okay and this tertiary follicle will keep on growing it will then grow into a large mature follicle graphene follicle which still have secondary oocyte because uh, i have written follicle here it's oocyte okay because this secondary oocyte is the one which will later on become egg but it will not be able to become egg if it will remain in the ovary it has to move out in the fallopian tube where it will leave sperm and only then it can complete its meiosis too now this follicle will rupture under the influence of hormone lh and this thing will move out from ovary and this will enter the fallopian tube for fertilization and to complete meiosis 1 so meio uh, sorry meiosis 2 meiosis 2 has been started here in the secondary oocyte this one has started meiosis 2 but at halt similarly this one has also started meiosis 1 meiosis 1 has been already started before puberty uh, before birth right but at halt all right now whatever is left from this graphene follicle it will become hemorrhagicum hemorrhagicum becomes luteum luteum becomes albicans luteum is yellow color body albicans is white color body and this one is endocrine corpus luteum is an endocrine body it secretes hormone this is how the oogenesis or ovum is formed in the female remember meiosis 2 will only uh, be completed when it will meet the sperm right so let's write some important points first at the time of birth female has 2 to 20 lakh primary follicle right second at puberty 60,000 to 80,000 primary follicles are left in each ovary, in each ovary. Another important point, meiosis 1 starts before birth but completed in tertiary follicle in tertiary follicle another point to note here that the division meiosis is unequal how it is unequal when this cell will undergo meiosis it will form a large oocyte and a very small polar body like imagine this is primary oocyte it will later on form a large secondary oocyte. What's the reason guys? Reason is we don't want to give cytoplasm to the polar body and this will degenerate later. This will degenerate later. Cool enough. Okay. So that's about uh, how oogenesis occur. Before uh, entering into hormone control and all, Let's see this diagram of NCRT first. In NCRT, they have given you ogonia, ogonia which has undergo mitosis just like in males and they will differentiate to form a primary oocyte. Then a primary oocyte will start meiosis 1 but it will be completed prior to ovulation as we have seen when a tertiary follicle will be formed at birth and then childhood occur then puberty. So at puberty ovulation will occur, it will form tertiary follicle like I have said primary follicle 
uh, one of our primary follicle will be second uh, will be selected it forms secondary follicle then it forms tertiary follicle so after the tertiary follicle is formed it will complete its meiosis uh, one and form secondary oocyte now the secondary oocyte again it is at stuck at meiosis two it will only complete its meiosis one when it will receive sperm fine here you can see the chromosome numbers just same as in males male have 2n condition in oogonia uh, spermatogonia female also have 2n condition in oogonia male had 2n condition in primary spermatocyte female also have 2n condition in the primary oocyte male had n in secondary female also have n n in here okay the only difference is male produced 22 uh, you know uh, pairs plus xy or female produces xx so for example if i say this is primary oocyte it will be 44 plus xx so here secondary oocyte will be anyways 22 plus x ovum will be always 22 plus x so male forms two types of gametes female produce one type of gamete let's differentiate between male and female or we can say spermatogenesis and oogenesis spermatogenesis and oogenesis let's differentiate so first of all spermatogenesis takes place in males and this takes place in females another this one starts at puberty and this one starts before birth before birth Female apart from the main oocytes, it contains follicles, contains follicles and in male there are no follicles, fine. In males two types of gametes are formed, two types of gametes are formed. What type will be there? 22 plus X, it can be 22 plus Y as well. In females only one type of gamete one type of gamete in male one primary spermatocyte forms how many sperms four sperms but here in females one primary oocyte will form only one ovum why because polar bodies form they will not later on divide to uh, form other cells here the divisions are equal you can see all the sperms will be of same size right here the division is unequal because it forms polar body unequal division it forms small polar body cool enough so such kind of question can be asked in your school boards that uh, differentiate between spermatogenesis and oogenesis then you can write all of these okay all right let's talk about hormones now so before starting about hormones we'll talk about corpus luteum corpus luteum corpus luteum as i'm writing with color yellow so that you will never forget the color of corpus luteum is yellow. It is a temporary endocrine body. Why I am calling it temporary? Because it is formed for some duration only. Like for example, it was not present in this time. It was only formed after ovulation. So before ovulation, you will not see any corpus luteum in a female's body. You will only see corpus luteum after ovulation. Okay. Now, it secretes hormone. Now what are the hormones does it secrete? First, which is a main hormone or it is secreted in high amount? Progesterone. Very small quantity of estrogen. It also secretes relaxin hormone. And it also secrete inhibin hormone. Fine. So that's why it is the endocrine body it is secreting all these hormones in a female. 
right okay but the main hormone is a progesterone hormone if it is secreting estrogen in small quantity then what is a source of estrogen in a female's body mature follicles mature follicle in a female secretes high amount of estrogen secrete high amount of estrogen so you must have heard of the hormone estrogen so like in male we have testosterone in females we have estrogen progesterone and a number of hormones that's why we are very complicated because we are not uh, or uh, on our own we are controlled by our hormones right so we are talking about hormones let's discuss the hormonal control so what happen in a female just like in male we also have brain some people think females does not have brains but i am going to break uh, or shatter that uh, glass of their thoughts that females do have brain you know they have equal brain right <laughs> so hypothalamus when she'll hit the puberty hypothalamus will uh, start secreting a hormone known as gonadotropin releasing hormone this hormone will start stimulating anterior pituitary gland and this gland will start secreting two hormones one is fsh first of all in female always fsh arises in female the first hormone to come is fsh after that lh comes okay so fsh will uh, lead to the development of ovarian follicles development of ovarian follicles as we have already seen so whatever follicles are developing from primary to secondary to tertiary to graphene it's just because of your fsh right so after the follicles gets developed the mature follicle the mature follicle will be the source of estrogen it will be the source of estrogen so estrogen is secreted by mature follicle once the estrogen arises it will give positive feedback to anterior pituitary positive feedback to anterior pituitary for lh always when she or a female have high amount of estrogen in her body she will keep on telling pituitary gland to secrete lh and to inhibit and to okay and to inhibit fsh so always estrogen gives negative feedback for fsh and positive feedback for lh remember this thing this is important this will be very important in menstrual cycle fine so let me tell you one more time gnrh will stimulate anterior pituitary to secrete fsh fsh will mature the follicle they will secrete estrogen estrogen will keep on telling pituitary to stop fsh estrogen will keep on telling pituitary to stop fsh but to secrete lh and what lh will do it will rupture mature follicle rupture the graphene follicle and that process is known as ovulation and you also know after rupture of graphene follicle corpus luteum is formed and corpus luteum is a rich source of progesterone it will secrete all these hormone what is the main role of the hormone we'll be discussing it later in this chapter but here you should know there are certain hormones giving negative feedback progesterone is a hormone that gives negative feedback to pituitary gland for both fsh and lh so in a female if progesterone level rises in blood so much it will keep on telling pituitary to stop both the hormone secretion also inhibin gives negative feedback to pituitary for fsh just like in male sertoli cell secrete inhibin and it gives negative feedback to fsh just like that the progesterone can also give negative feedback to hypothalamus 
it can also give negative feedback to hypothalamus i hope you all know what is negative feedback if something is in high quantity it will stop the secretion of something like if estrogen is in high quantity it will give negative feedback to fsh that means it will stop the secretion of fsh from pituitary if it is at high quantity it is giving positive feedback to lh it will tell the pituitary to secrete lh okay just like that so this is how all the hormones are regulated or we can say this is how the female's body is run mostly by the hormones as we have seen here also fsh is controlling the uh, you know uh, this maturation of follicles after they got mature they're secreting high amount of estrogen so this is secreting high amount of estrogen estrogen rises it is leading to the formation of lh now lh came ovulation occurs after ovulation corpus luteum develop it is secreting lot of progesterone as a result no follicle is developing because progesterone is giving negative feedback right all right so let's talk about some questions okay so the first question is the graphene follicle ruptures to release dash from the ovary by the process called ovulation primary oocyte secondary oocyte after completing meiosis 2 secondary oocyte after completing meiosis 1 with the release of first smaller body mature ovum so when a graphene follicle rupture what does it has inside of it it has secondary oocyte right so not the primary oocyte and not even the ovum it does not have secondary oocyte not the ovum ovum is formed when sperm uh, penetrates right it's secondary oocyte after completed meiosis 2 not after completed meiosis 1 and formed first polar body so answer is 3 right after ovulation when it enters inside the fallopian tube for example this is ovary this is fimbrae this is fallopian tube so here the rupture has occurred okay so here it has ruptured it will enter here uh, it will move in the ampulla in the ampulla it will meet the sperm sperm will enter and then meiosis 2 will be completed okay and uh, it will form the ovum next the figure given below depicts a diagrammatic sectional view of ovary which one of the following three parts out of one to six are correctly identified so this is a diagram from ncrt so it's very important to see the ncrt diagrams also so first is a primary follicle okay First is a primary follicle. In NCRT, they have not labeled this one, but this is a developing or growing follicle. So it can be a secondary follicle. It can be a secondary follicle. This is tertiary follicle. This is graphene follicle. This is ovum released. They have used the word ovum, but using the word ovum here is technically incorrect. This is the oocyte that is released. Okay. This is corpus luteum. Now let's see. So sixth is tertiary follicle. No not at all third is the graphene follicle true fifth is corpus this is also true second is secondary follicle no it's tertiary follicle third is the graphene follicle and fourth is ovulation it's ovum first is primary follicle true second is your tertiary follicle true and fifth is corpus luteum so answer is three why fourth is wrong let's see first is primary true second is not corpus luteum it is tertiary follicle and fifth is corpus luteum Right? So, such kind of questions can also be asked. If you will solve the DPP, there I have put a lot of good questions from this diagram. So, make sure to solve the DPP. Okay. Next. Now, most of you must not be knowing where DPP is provided. It is in the application. You have to download our application of Physics Wala. Go to the free batch, excellence batch. There on a weekly schedule, you can find all the DPPs. Okay. For example, in weekly schedule, you have this class. Down on the link of the class, you will see the DPP. The temporary endocrine gland in the human body is pineal gland is not temporary. It is always present and secrete the hormone melatonin. Maintain sleep and wake cycle. These two gland, alatum and cardiacum, they belongs to insect, whereas corpus luteum is temporary endocrine gland. So answer is three. Next. Okay. Second polar body is released after dash in dash region. Choose the option that fills the blank correctly. First is first meiotic ovary second meiotic oviduct second meiotic ovary first meiotic ovary second polar body when it will be formed primary oocyte divide to form secondary oocyte and first polar body they are talking about second 
when the meiosis 2 occurs ovum is formed and then secondary polar uh, second polar body is formed so second polar body will only be formed along with the ovum and where is ovum formed ovum only gets formed at fertilization and fertilization takes place at ampulla of fallopian tube so it is oviduct at any case but what will be formed what kind of division it will be it will be second meiotic division so answer is right next again a diagrammatic question so select the option which gives the correct identification of a and b with function or character so a is primary oocyte no a is not primary oocyte it is primary follicle right b is corpus luteum this is true and it secretes progesterone a is not tertiary follicle it's primary follicle and b is corpus luteum it though it secretes estrogen but main is progesterone so that's why answer is 2 so i have put this question deliberately because um, a lot of places in the exam you will uh, find uh, an options where both the hormones will be given like corpus luteum secrete answer uh, the option is testosterone estrogen progesterone and any other like say it be melatonin so what will be the answer progesterone because it secretes progesterone in high quantity so you will always choose progesterone okay next the second maturation division of mammalian ovum occurs in the graphene follicle following the first maturation division shortly after ovulation before the ovum makes entry in the fallopian tube until after the ovum has been penetrated by a sperm until the nucleus of sperm has fused with that of the ovum so second maturation division means second meiosis it only occur when ovum is penetrated by the sperm straight away you don't have to think much answer is 3 all right so that's it about oogenesis so i just suggest all of you it's a kind of a tricky but you have to pay so much attention during studying this topic if you will do this nicely and you get to understand each and everything menstrual cycle will be very easy for you trust me if you will learn all the things that i have given to you if you will understand all the things that i taught you today menstrual cycle will be very easy and you will thank me later throughout your life that ma'ams the command on the hormone is really nice after you have taught us right i'm not just praising myself i just want to tell you that here is your work that you have to pay attention because if you pay attention that's all your hard work right so i am just here to teach you <laughs> so i'll meet in the next class and uh, keep solving dpps keep making notes and don't give up i'll meet in the next class till then bye bye and yes this is really very important from neat point of view so study it really very well bye bye take care